Dear students, today we have the second iteration and the second module related to software engineering methodologies. And in this uh, second module on this type, we will be mainly focusing on prototype and we will be discussing in details that how prototype is built and what kind of prototypes are available and how you process by building prototype in the software engineering lifecycle. So prototype is incomplete version of the proposed system. For example, we build, we discuss in the last module about iterative uh, model in which we build a prototype, which is an incomplete version that is not finished, that cannot be released uh, at that time. And why we want to build the prototype so that we can see in the start of the software engineering, um, software engineering that how our software will look like and we could also get the feedback from the client and the customers. So first of very basic uh, prototype is known as paper prototype. So there are many, many different type of prototypes which we build. So this paper prototype is one of such kind. And in this paper prototype, we discuss with the client that we will give this, for example, uh, screen at the first stage. And then in the next stage, we will have such a screen, then such a screen, then such a screen. And then you can also add some of the functionalities that what will be done on this particular prototype version. So why we build such a prototype on paper? Because this gives us uh, information that an opportunity that we can get maximum feedback from the client. So if we uh, build very sophisticated prototype developed in a very advanced software, then the chances are that client and customers are not going to give us valuable feedback. So when we design it on paper, then there is a chances, bright chances that it will involve the clients as well as they can also design something on paper. And this is one of the working prototype. So once the paper prototype is finalized, one of the prototype which we can build using some available tools is working prototype. So for example, they have actually designed the screenshots, which you can see, and they have said that when you click over here, it will move to this direction. When you click over here, this will move to this direction. And these uh, screens will be opened on different functionalities. So this will also give an early uh, feedback on the software rather than by completing all of the requirements and design and then implementation and then testing and then the user is giving you the feedback. So it is better that first uh, prepare an incomplete version and get the feedback from the user. So next is the evolutionary prototyping. In the case of incremental model, as initial prototypes in, in, uh, evolve into the complete final system, so this process is known as evolutionary prototype. And then there is another uh, thing associated with prototype known as throwaway prototypes. So in a more iterative situation, when we have an incomplete prototype of whole system, and then we are refining that uh, system. So the previous prototypes may be discarded in favor of fresh implementation of the final design. This approach is known as throwaway prototypes. Then there is another concept, rapid prototyping. Simple example of the proposed system is quickly constructed in the early stages of the development. And this is a demonstration version. And this is created in a tool where you do not need to write much of the code. So you start uh, getting things as a tool, as a component, and with those components, you can make the incomplete prototype very quickly. And otherwise, if you are going to write such a code in some language like C++ or Java without the integrated environment, then it will give you or it will take a lot of time to write such a code. 
So open source development is another uh, concept here that it purpose is to produce the free software. So that software can be used by anyone. So it is not copyrighted. A single author writes the initial version and then source code and documentation is shared via internet where others can contribute. So when someone wants to contribute to that software, so they uh, write their code and then they inform the author which updates the next version and which is available again to the community. Then there are some agile methods. This is a pronounced shift from waterfall model is represented by the collection of methodologies known as agile methods. And this proposes early and quick implementation on an incremental basis. So there are different ways to, to uh, build, construct a software using agile methodologies. One of them is extreme programming. And in extreme programming, software is built or developed by a team of less than a dozen of people working together by means of repeated quickly cycles and helping each other. And this can be evaluated by project stakeholders, the clients and the customers for which you are developing the software at any stage. So if we conclude software methodology part two, we have discussed about prototyping, we have discussed about open source development, agile methods and extreme programming.